Welcome back to Watching Film and Varnador Films. I am Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach, and I break down film here on YouTube. Uh, Florida's got another game. They got a couple wins in their belt the last two weeks. Now they go on the road to play an early kickoff against Vanderbilt. What kind of a team is Vanderbilt? Well, they beat Kentucky last week, and that's kind of where we get the most film from them. We're going to look at some film here. There's a little bit from the Georgia game, a little bit from Wake, uh, but finding Vandy film is like, I don't know why this year finding Vanderbilt film is like finding a Sasquatch type thing. You got you, you can see it kind of walking by, uh, but it's never clear. Uh, there's little highlights from field level, but not a ton of actual uh, TV footage for some reason. So not as much from a, a variety of games, but we've got enough here to get started. And we'll start with the defense. I think, you know, Clark Lee is obviously uh, was a really good defensive coordinator before he got the Vanderbilt job. They do some interesting stuff on that side of the ball. He was really good at Notre Dame. Um and you can see here, I think they're, I think this is like a cover three cloud look, but you can watch how this rotates post snap here. Where you get a guy down in the box. He looks like he's running to deep third. He looks like he's deep third and he's dropping deep third. Um, and then you got guys playing in the flats on both sides. They they seem to keep a lot of things in front of them. They don't. There there's opportunities to make plays in the passing game, but um, there seems to be a big area kind of in front of the coverage that you can exploit. And we'll see that more um, as we get to some of the Kentucky stuff. But here's kind of the same look, I think, or a similar look. You got a corner that looks like he's a cloud corner. You get the go route and the whole shot here. But I think he's going deep third. It looks like he's dropping in the middle. He's dropping to a third here. Could be quarter, quarter, half. Right. But the the idea is the same. You got kind of three over the top. Uh corner playing a cloud. I think they might like this to the boundary to eliminate easy throws to the boundary. Um, but still it's not gonna they're not it's they do a variety of stuff. They'll do some just straight quarters too at times where they'll just drop. You'll see four across and they'll just get depth. Um, I think there's an opportunity for Florida with their flood routes. You see here, he works for depth. You get one running him off, I believe. He's working the flat here. I think he carries that out, right? And then you've got kind of in, you've got a big kind of window in between. Right, and you know Florida likes to exploit that area with their flood concept. So they love to run this guy off, have this guy sitting there, and have one coming up short. So I'm sure we're going to see a ton of flood concepts from Florida again this week if Vanderbilt is determined to keep things in front of them, which they give up a, pun a bunch of explosive plays. But um, when you watch them a little bit, they it does seem they try to keep stuff in front of them for the most part. Now – as we've seen, Florida's tried to do that as well, and it hasn't always worked. But, um, you know, I think there's an attempt being made. So here's against Kentucky. You see they'll, they'll move the front a lot. Um, I think Florida will see uh, – I think Florida will see some uh, – it's hard to tell if this is kind of a tight front or a bare front, uh, but Florida will see some of this. I'd imagine when they go 12 personnel, uh, they'll see some of this look. They'll change their fronts up. They like to move the front a lot and then kind of give you some exotic looks and then stem and stunt to different things. You see here some movement. You got the linebacker at the line of scrimmage here. He'll slant. He's working back here. So they do some interesting stuff up the line of scrimmage. Um, I think this is a scrape exchange. I think they're scrape exchanging this. So it looks like he's coming downhill. He's going to take away the dive. you got the backer outside for the read. Kentucky does a good job of bringing the split zone to kind of combat that. So there's a split. Your backer's coming outside in the scrape exchange. That leaves a hole right there. 
So it will be interesting to see if that's how they want to play Florida's read game. Do they want to play it with like a scrape exchange like that? And then what can Florida do off that? I'm sure they'll do have a few different looks. Um, and one thing they like to do is they'll, they'll like to bring pressure. They're not afraid. They'll bring these guys. They'll stand them up at the line of scrimmage, loop them. Right here you see they're bringing the safety down. They're not afraid to kind of take some risk and bring some pressure. And they got to Kentucky. I think they had four sacks, but they they forced some errant throws. Um, now, if you if you blitz a ton, you may have, you may have to play some man coverage behind it. So, can you make uh, can you make the most of your opportunities against man coverage if you're the Florida offense? Because if you don't, they can get to you and affect you. So, four sacks, but they probably affected eight or nine plays really. You see one here, they get there eventually. This is a nice one. Looks like you bring two in the A gap. Here's the back view of it. He's going to be here, and then he kind of follows. I don't know if he's reading him or, or if it's just designed, because you'll see a lot of times guys will here and then loop back around. You know, I wonder if he's just getting vertical, trying to eat that up, and he's coming. But it definitely looked like he was coming across to start. But I'm not sure if that's something they read or something. But you see they're able to get pressure, eat up two blockers with his first backer that's coming, and then bring the second one around. This is something they like to hear. They catch it late, but it's kind of a similar look here. Different guy going first. But kind of a similar idea there. Ends up with a sack. So... They're uh they're aggressive up front. They're gonna move, they're gonna give you some difference right here. They bring two off this edge, drop the end here. So they're gonna they're gonna give you some different looks, right? But they, they seem to have issues with gap runs where you can kind of down block them and then kick those guys. Uh Kentucky hit some big runs like that, some gap runs. You see the one there from Georgia. Here's how I thought this was interesting how they played the boot here by Kentucky. He flies out with number one. Watch this guy here, right? A lot of teams, Florida does this too, offensively. They'll have one go out, they'll have the tight end block down, and then kind of get out late and kind of trail this guy. Florida likes to do this. A lot of teams do this off boot. Watch this. So one's out. He's got him. Watch, see how he's wheeling or he's turning around and finding this guy. So if you want to come back to that, he's got eyes on it. Right now, so they do a good job covering this thing up. Florida likes to run boot, so it'll be interesting to see how they can kind of what wrinkles they can do to to get it off. But here's what I was talking about earlier in terms of there being, especially off play action, there's there's some holes in the intermediate area of the passing game. That hasn't been a strength, I don't think, of Florida's passing game, but it hasn't been bad this year. They've hit some throws in there. So off play action, I think you're going to get the backers stepping up. Uh, especially after you watch Florida last week, rush for all those yards, have almost three guys with 100 yards. So there might be some plays to be made in the intermediate area of the passing game. Now, they like to play. It seems like they like to keep stuff in front of them, but that's not to say they don't give up some shots. Here's Wake Forest getting a shot over the top. There's still, I think, Florida will still have opportunities, especially if they can get the run game lathered up a little bit. Uh, off play action to get guys over the top. Offensively, they're a zone. I think they're a zone run team, but they do a lot in the run game. This is a pretty fun run game to watch, especially if uh, Mike Wright is the quarterback. I have not been able to find a ton with AJ Swan, who I believe was they're kind of he was the starter. Uh, got injured against in South Carolina. Wright came in, finished the game, and then and then played all last week against Kentucky. It seems like he's going to be the guy that gets the nod this week, but. They haven't said for sure. So, but here's a little split zone. You got zone with the kick out that sets up a lot of stuff for them in the run game. But zone, split zone. You see here a nice run against Kentucky. I think this is duo. It's hard to tell for sure, but the way this thing bounces to me looks like it might be duo. Then right here, you got some interesting wrinkles off the zone. So you've got, um, 
I believe it ends up hitting like this. So there's your zone look. Just like split zone, he's going to bluff. And then you have a pitch man. You're running triple option with the bluff here. So right there, he's inside. He's leading up. 13 forces the pitch. He's also a really good player, so he makes the tackle as well. But there's another interesting wrinkle off the zone run game, a little triple option. One. Quarterback's the second option. Pitch is the third option. It's a little triple. Here you go, a little. It looks, to, it's it, typically this is done with guards and guards, but uh, this looks like, uh, you know, it just looks like buck sweep to me. It's just, or you could just pin pull. Maybe what they what they call it, but here, pulling here, pulling with the quarterback run tied to the back side of it. They also do a little uh, zone read, just normal zone read like everybody else does. Are they reading right? Reading the end man there, the walk up treating him as the end man he goes inside easy read for the quarterback and he's a plus runner so if right is playing i think i saw he's like a sub 11 100 meters guy you see that here off the power jet the power read off the jet motion i think i saw he's like a 10 7 800 meters guy so this dude can fly um and if you're not gap sound so right here he sees the hole back here that'll usually hit in here but he must see this. He sees this guy flash. He cuts it back. And you can see with his speed, he takes this thing to the house. And they do this jet read a couple of times. So there it is again. Show the jet reading him. And now here's my puller coming up inside to lead. I saw Florida break this out a little bit last week as well. Here you have a uh, bash counter. So the back's actually going to go away. This is something you saw uh, USF run against Florida. Back away. And then it looks like they're pulling the backside guard and tackle here. Tight ends kind of uh, protecting the puller's gap there. You got two coming around. Quarterback keeps it into the counter scheme there. But bash, so back away. So that's a tough look. Florida struggled with it against USF. I think it's partly because USF had never shown it, uh, but it's still a tough thing to deal with. Quarterback's got legs in the pass game. Obviously, you got to keep him contained. Uh, good job in the pocket, understanding um, your rush lanes and that kind of pocket integrity because he can take off on you and do some stuff. Some of it's designed, but some of it's just he'll extend plays like he does here, find a guy for a first down. End up getting a, a penalty on this at, at tax on another 15. They'll do some RPO. It's a little RPO look here. I haven't seen a ton of it, but they ran it a couple times against Kentucky. Uh, both look to be RPOs. One on the slant, one with the hitch. I, I think it's, they're pretty easy reads. Here it looks like um, quick game. You've got stick. Can't get him up stick. And then the slot fade version of it, so you can take the go. Wright loves to throw the ball to number 14. So you'll see later on maybe a little too much at times, but 14 is a pretty good player at receiver. They run another version of stick here, so they will get in compressed sets and give issues. And basically, he's going to motion across and run a deep crosser. So it kind of functions almost as a smash for the quarterback, kind of a similar read to smash. Uh, but he's also got the stick component down here. Tight window, doesn't quite get the throw in. Down here, you've got uh, some version of snag. So you got the snag corner in the flat and up top, quick game, just a slant. This is the winning play against Kentucky here. 14 gets open, makes a play. They also, they must run, uh, I haven't seen a ton. So out of these condensed sets, a lot of people like to run 
uh, smash like this with the speed out in a corner from this condensed set, they'll turn this into a whip. So I'm assuming they run the speed out first. Once you start flying to the speed out, they hit you with the whip. So you see he works outside, comes back inside here, right? Make you think it's a speed out and then stick my foot back in the ground. And you see this guy carrying out the corner out there. I think their, their offense is well designed and 14 is a pretty good player in the passing game. They have not been um, awesome on offense, but they've been pretty good. Here's another kind of same thing. He's running the whip. Do it out of, out of bunch here. He's running the whip. I think he's on the corner. He's going to come across, and they got another crosser coming back this way. But same idea, whip corner, make it look like smash. Whip back inside. That one's thrown away. Uh, this is a concept they liked against Kentucky. It's Hank. This is, a, I think, a West Coast staple, right? Florida runs it. A lot of people run it. It's curl flat with a guy over the ball. He's probably on the flare back there. Good good play against zone. So if you get some zone, I'm sure you'll see some Hank. They ran it a few times, and they ran it in some high leverage situations. Here's a third and ten. Over the ball right there. Another one they like. So I think they like the curls, but they have they have a concept they ran a couple of times here where it looks like an outside receiver off screen is running to go. And then he's almost going to run like a bender or – maybe like a deep crosser. They switch up their releases and he runs a curl. I'm not sure if he's reading leverage or it could be, you know, it very well could be like a three verts type look and he's just reading leverage and, and throttles down or maybe he could keep going vertically. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it very well could be that, but they took a shot outside here. You see fourth and 11, a minute left, a minute 20 left in the game. Big play. And then we showed that jet motion for the uh, run earlier. Here's some for the pass. Verts. Wide. And then the back lead blocking. It should be up the hash. Florida, I think this is the one Richardson missed down in the red area. Against a and I believe. No, I mean, it must have been. It may have been. Maybe it was LSU. Uh, one is just missed. Play you got to make. But you see that. The, so they, they got things designed off of play action. Off of their run game stuff. So it looks like their run game. Play action. Well designed stuff. So uh, one thing that Wright does is he seems to force it. So here you can see 14 running a, a, a hitch and go like he's got no chance on this ball. The, the, the thing is capped to use uh, another coach's parlance. It's capped. Shouldn't throw it. He throws it anyways. Interception. You'll see here. He's trying to force it again to 14 on fourth and seven. This should have been the ball game. Uh, Kentucky gets called for illegal hands to the face at the line of scrimmage. So the game is continued. Um, so they kind of got a little lucky. You see the legal hands to face happening here. But he's trying to kind of force that curl into 14, and a thing gets picked. Uh, and then here against Wake Forest, trying to make a play, extend the play, and just kind of throws it up. I don't know if he's trying to throw that away, but it gets picked and taken to the house, I believe. So he'll, uh, he'll, he'll give you some. I this would I would assume this is a game this is a game if Florida comes in awake. Uh they should handle pretty well. Covering the spread at 14. I think it's probably doable, but who knows with the back door open. We got a big game next week. So how much do you really want to put out there? Um this is a game Florida should win if they play clean. If they play if they play sloppy and turn the ball over. Well, then I think you find yourself in a dogfight because Vandy plays hard and they do some interesting stuff that could give you some some problems. Uh, but if you play clean, this should be a game you win. But uh, 
Vandy is a well-coached team, and I kind of enjoyed watching them. So I look forward to see what they do in the coming years with that coaching staff. 